Well, Noda, we've known each other a long time. You've known Tiger Woods a lot longer. You two are best friends. What have the emotions been like for you the last 24 hours? Gosh, you know, it's been a 40-plus year friendship, Steve, and, um, you know, to be quite frank about it, you know, it was devastating to get that news yesterday, you know, uh, on my phone. My wife, April, contacted me, and, and I just, you know, I was at a loss for words. I, I didn't know what was happening, and um, I was sort of helpless with everybody else, just waiting for more more news and more information, reaching out and, you know, extending as much support to the the team as, as I could um, from where I was. But, you know, to be quite fair, it was a tough day for me. You're on the inside. All of us are on the outside trying to figure out what happened, how he's doing, all the information, trying to disseminate to the public. From the inside, what's the communication like? Well, it's just it's just about positivity and, and trying to support my friend and trying to um, send as much positive energy as I possibly can and um, hope for the best. And you know, as surgeries were taking place and those sorts of things were developing, just um, saying a prayer to myself that I hope this thing works out well for him. I mean, it was on the brink of. Um, some purely devastating outcomes that, that thankfully were avoided and uh, now it's just um, trying to understand that you know there's some children that have a father in the hospital and my friend is working through some very difficult times and um, you know just just really trying to play a supportive role and in, in knowing what he's given to me in our friendship knowing what he's given to our sport I just think is um, Something that's been on the on the front of my mind the last 24 hours. How inconsequential is golf right now? It, it's it's irrelevant at this point. I mean, we're talking initially talking about life or death situations, and now we're talking about surgeries and uncertainties around recovery. So it, it's about supporting um, my my friend and hoping that he pulls through this as best as possible, and that you know we give him and his family and everybody. Uh, the privacy that I think that they deserve to process and work through this and um, be respectful of that space. And um, when Tiger's ready to talk about golf, he'll talk about golf. But until that point, it's just focused on positive thoughts and recovery. We were chatting on the phone last night, and we were amazed at the coverage that this is receiving outside of the golf space and also the sports world into the 24-7 news cycle. What is it about your friend that resonates with everyone around the world? I think you, you saw it in, in 1997 when he sort of made that huge introduction to the world of golf and just number one, how good he was, and number two, how he transcended the sport and how he energized it by the way he played and how he attacked golf courses and didn't have a, a regard for records and wanted to do things um, a different way. And, you know, I'm, I'm wearing my Tiger Woods red today and my Stanford Cardinal red today because those are things that were important to him and things that I just want to continue to send as much um, positivity and ask people out there that in the sports world who have admired and appreciated what he's done for our game and watched through the years as he's done just things that nobody ever thought was possible uh, to, in their own way, send their positive thoughts and support and um, you know, be respectful of, of the privacy of the family. Jack Nicholas has become, in the last five or ten years, the grandfather of the game. Tiger has become the father, big brother, to all of these PGA Tour players who are out here today because they grew up watching him and idolizing him, and he's allowed them in in the last, say, half dozen or eight years. Ratif Goosen, Vijay Singh, David Duvall, Phil Mickelson, you know, they didn't, get that Ernie else they didn't get that from Tiger how much has he evolved as a man in the last 25 years not his golf but as a person immensely I think first and foremost it was um, you know embracing his role as a father he, he he just loves his kids with with all his heart and um, you know they're they're going through a real difficult period right now and I just you know uh, you know, hope that that they're okay. You know, I guess that that's the the first thing. And um, secondly, the injury period um, when he had after the first few surgeries on his back, 
and playing a role in the vice captaincy on the Ryder Cup in 2016 and the President's Cup in 2017, he was able to engage the younger generations at a different level and started to really recognize the opportunity to um, be a, 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 a resource for these young players. And that's when he formulated these great relationships with Justin Thomas and Ricky Fowler and Dustin Johnson and Jordan Spieth, the sort of next great generation of golfers uh, in our game. And they saw the human side of him. They saw the personality that I've known for so long. They saw the, the funny side. And um, they're, they're lucky and they're better for it. And I know that they've appreciated that relationship that fostered some five or six years ago. We know you're going through a lot, Noda. Thanks for stopping by. Absolutely.